Are you looking to make weekly or monthly income? In this video, I'm going to talk about doing covered calls on stocks to make weekly and monthly income. I'm going to go over an example and I'm going to pick some stocks that I believe are some of the best stocks to running this strategy right now. Throughout my experience, I think covered calls are literally the best strategy to use. I spoke to a financial advisor who manages NBA player money. This was back in college when I was studying finance and he basically only uses strategy to grow the wealth of NBA players. So I wanna talk about the do's and don'ts and what you must avoid when running the covered call strategy because if you don't do it correctly, you can still make money, but you won't make as much money and you will end up losing your And that's because when you're doing a covered call, you have 100 shares of stock and then you sell a covered call. And if that covered call goes into the money, and let me just show you an example, if it goes into the money, then you're gonna end up losing your stock. So I like Neo right now, specifically, I've looked at the chart. The chart looks absolutely delicious, insane. I mean, this stock was over $50 per share. And since then it has basically taken the staircase and sometimes the elevator down. I mean, this stock went from 55 to 45 in just a matter of a couple of weeks. And then since then, the stock has really been struggling, but you know, it is a falling knife, but at some point it is time to buy the stock. And for me, I wanna be invested in China. I wanna be diversified, especially what's happening with the dollar. A lot of countries may go away from the dollar and that's gonna hurt our US dollar a lot. So I do wanna be invested in China and other currencies out there. And specifically, NEO is very interesting because I think it's one of the best EV stocks. There's Tesla, there's NEO, but for me, NEO, it's a homegrown Chinese company. China wants it to succeed. China is on the back of NEO. So for me, I really like NEO. And as you can see, the moving average is continuously just going down. And currently it's sitting at 14 and NEO is sitting at $9.27 per share. Now, if I go to the three month chart, you'll see why I really wanna do the covered call strategy on this because NEO goes up and down and it fluctuates, but there is a very strong double bottom at 825. And what you have to remember about the covered call strategy is that it's a bullish strategy, okay? When you're doing a covered call, you are buying 100 shares and then you're selling a call option as I'll show you in an example. But when you own these 100 shares, you don't want them to pull back because if they pull back, then you're gonna end up losing money. So this is a bullish strategy and you wanna find a stock that has good support. And for me, NEO right now, $8.25 is the bottom, $8.26, and currently it's sitting at $8.33. So I feel very, very comfortable that there is a strong support in place for NEO. And if I run the covered call strategy, at worst, this stock will probably go sideways and then I'm gonna end up making money on the call options that I sell. Now, if the stock bounces up, let's say to the moving average of $9.33 or just $9, then I'm gonna end up selling the stock. And that's why it's really important to pick the right strike price because if I sell eight and a half, I might end up leaving money on the table. Like let's go into my portfolio and go to trade NEO options and let's take a look at the premium and let's talk about picking the right strike because this is very important. If you don't pick the right strike, then you are leaving money on the table. And if you pick out a strike that's really far out of the money, then you're just not collecting enough premium. So you really wanna find that sweet spot. So let's go to expiration. I'm gonna to go to an expiration day of May 19. For me, I wanna pick an expiration date that's between one to six weeks. A lot of my students will ask me, well, why don't we just do weekly trading? Why do we have to do monthly sometimes? And the truth of the matter is, it actually doesn't really matter. You can pick an expiration date that is one to six weeks because regardless, there's a very fast time decay. All right, so I'm gonna look at the May 12th because the May 19 wasn't really populating since I am doing this before the market opens. Now check this out. You can sell the eight and a half covered call option and that's great, right? You can make $49, which is an insanely high return. This is basically a 6% return because six times eight is 48. So this is a 6% return in 19 days less than three weeks, guys. This is how you build up a portfolio. You collect a lot of income, passive income consistently and safely, and that's how you grow a portfolio, whether you have a small portfolio, a medium portfolio, or a larger portfolio. Sticking to the safe strategies like covered calls is basically what I do. I sell puts, covered calls, and I run the wheel. These are my top three favorite strategies. Now, check it out. If I sell the eight and a half call option, that's fantastic. I'm collecting a lot of money, and if I look at Look at the delta, it is 0.48, which is really high. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but what is going to happen is if over the next three weeks, NEO goes above $8.50, I will have to lose the stock at 8.50. So if it goes to $9, I won't be able to capture all of that movement on the upside. I won't be able to capture the capital appreciation. So my sweet spot here would probably be about $9. If you go to $9.50 and I expand this, you'll see that the delta is 0.24. However, I am not opposed based on the technicals, as you can see here, that it is probably not super likely that in the next three weeks, NEO will explode that much higher past nine and a half dollars. 
but it's likely to reach about $9 per share. And that's why rather than selling the nine and a half dollar covered call, I'd rather go for the $9 covered call because this is right in the middle. And if I expand the Delta, it's 0.34. This is a great Delta to do covered calls. 0.34 is right between the area which I like of 0.25 to 0.4. Now there is a big difference guys. I sometimes do go 0.4. I only do that though specifically when I have a stock that has a really high dividend. So I call this a double dividend strategy. Sometimes I will do covered calls on something like Kraft Heinz. So if Kraft Heinz, for example, let me show you what Kraft Heinz looks like. I like to do higher Delta covered calls on Kraft Heinz and I'm starting to get into the strategy because I call it the double dividend strategy. Specifically, if you take a look at Kraft Heinz, the dividend right here is 4%, which is really high. This is almost double or about double the S&P 500 and interesting from Pennsylvania, I'm from Philadelphia originally. So if I take a look at Kraft Heinz, the price to earnings ratio is pretty low, it's 20. So this is a very good value stock, okay? It's not going for a very expensive valuation, has a very high dividend yield, and it does not have that much volatility. So despite like, it looks like it has a lot of volatility, in the past three months, it's only down about 2%. So this stock is not a big mover. In the past year, it's down 10%. So that's fantastic for running a covered call and a double dividend strategy, where you can basically buy a company that does not have a lot of volatility and it has a good dividend yield, and then you can sell at the money covered calls. Now, let's talk about at the money and the best practice here because it's very important for increasing your returns and managing your risk, guys. I talk about this a lot on my channel, which is basically how do you manage a position? And nobody really talks about this because they don't understand it. They don't have a finance degree or actual experience. A lot of people are just making videos based on what they read on Google or they're using ChatGPT, which obviously I don't really use. I'm actually giving you real information. If you appreciate that, please drop a like on this video. But I really wanna focus a little bit on psychology and the benefits of strike selection because your strategy doesn't mean a lot especially when you're looking at your profits and your losses, you can increase your returns a lot and you can decrease your risk. And if you can just do that by a few percentage points, you are making a really huge difference in your portfolio. So check it out, Kraft Heinz, I have an average price of $39.42, okay? So I ended up buying 200 shares of this position. And then you'll actually see that I've done something really, really interesting. I've actually sold two different covered calls. Now there's a really big difference here and we need to talk about it. Okay, so the first covered call that I sold is very short term in nature. It's expiring in just five days, okay? So this option right here is a weekly option. I ended up selling a 39.5 covered call. So as you can see, my average price is $39.42. I ended up selling an at the money covered call for $39.50. Now, why did I do this? Why did I not give myself more room for upside? And the reason is because Kraft Heinz is not really moving that much, okay? There's a difference between Neo stock, which has more volatility, and then Kraft Heinz, which is a very stable stock. Warren Buffett owns it. So this company is not moving a lot. And for that reason, I wanna do closer to the money covered calls. And in fact, if I look at this, the Delta, it has changed slightly because I've had this position open after I opened up in Discord a couple days ago, but this position right here has a very high Delta, 0.37. And in fact, it was a lot higher before Kraft Heinz started falling down because it has gone down by about 2% in the past few days. But I decided to sell an at the money covered call because I wanted to collect the most amount of premium. So the premium is the highest the closer to the money you go. So as you can imagine, if I were to pick an option that's very far away, it's not going to have much premium. But I don't mind going very close for Kraft Heinz because I don't expect it to have that much movement. So I can basically bank on two things. Number one, the dividend, and then number two, the call option premium that I'm collecting. Now the next thing that I did, because this is low management and pretty good return, is I ended up selling a July 21st covered call. Now this is a few months out, but what I decided to do was go out a little bit higher to $40 per share. This is still not that much higher. It will give me about one or 2% upside in capital appreciation from the stock itself. But what I'm really banking on is again, the dividend and I collected a dollar and 10 cents in premium. Now a dollar and 10 cents in premium is actually a lot because this is $110 in premium that I've collected on just a $3,900 position. So this is about a 3% return plus I'm collecting dividends, plus this is very low volatility. So this is a fantastic retirement strategy. If you have a little bit more money, you can absolutely do safe companies where you sell covered calls. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a small account either because with a small account, this still makes sense because I'm all about consistency, growing your portfolio slow and steady, getting rich slowly. I'm not a fan of doing anything risky or buying strategies because those strategies are not consistent. They end up losing money, you end up being stressed, and that is not the point of how you wanna grow your wealth using options. My psychology is I'm always after safe, passive income, 
and the covered call strategy is one of my favorite strategies because it's safe, it's passive, it's consistent. And then I can also do the double dividend strategy, which, which is basically picking low volatility companies and then using covered calls to generate income on them. Now, I do wanna talk about different scenarios and give you some tips because if you can watch out for the factors that are affecting the stock, then you can actually avoid a lot of losses. So for example, let me go to something like Oatly. Okay, we can use a number of different examples, but when a stock has really strong momentum and it's going to the downside, what you actually may wanna do is you may not wanna hold your covered call until expiration. Typically, I do hold my covered call until expiration because I get the biggest raw return, okay? So I typically open a position and I don't even touch it. I just let it expire. And you can actually see that I'm doing the covered call strategy on Oatly, it's going very well. In fact, I'm up $1,000 on a very small position. But I will tell you, when a stock is going in the opposite direction of where you want it to go, and it just continues to go down and it hits a certain threshold. So for me, that could be 5% or 10%. It just really depends on the technical analysis. So let's just take a look at NEO again, for example. It has a really strong support at 825. But for example, let's say that this goes down a lot and it breaks support and it ends up falling. To be honest, I don't even know where it would fall because it's already such a value stock. But let's just say that it goes down to $7. Well, in that scenario, what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually roll your strike lower. I won't actually hold the position until expiration in that scenario. So as you can see now, I have a lot of different option positions in my portfolio. I have American Airlines, which I'm doing a covered call. This has been my bread and butter for a very long time. Basically every single one to two weeks in my Discord, I'm opening up a position on American Airlines. I'm selling covered calls and I'm usually collecting about one or 2% in premium. So I have that on American Airlines, I have Kraft Heinz, I'm just trying to look for an example where my covered call has made a lot of money and I may want to roll it down lower because the stock most likely fell a lot. So I'm trying to find that example. If we find a example, I'm going to open that up. So let's take a look at maybe Alibaba. So let's actually finish the positions that I have. So I have Alibaba 88 call, other covered calls that I have currently in my portfolio looks like Oatly. I also have SPY. So SPY could be a really good example for us. Yeah, let's go into SPY. SPY is a perfect example because I have a lot of money in SPY. Specifically, if we take a look at my position, I have about 85% of my portfolio in, in SPY at the moment. This is basically the rock and the stability in my portfolio, kind of like the anchor, because I look at SPY for diversification. I have a lot of money at this point, right? $2 million. So I don't want to invest my entire $2 million in a single stock. So what I do is I make my life a lot simpler by investing the S&P 500. And I also have single stocks as well, but S&P 500 is really my anchor and it provides me income because I am doing the covered call strategy, hence the title of this video, on SPY as well. So as you can see, a big position on SPY, 84.5%. 3,000 shares, I have $1.2 million. And what I wanna point out is that the current stock price is 412. And the position that I have right now is the 419 covered call. Now, if you'll notice that if SPY goes down, my covered call is benefiting. So if I expand this covered call right now, I wanna show you something really interesting about managing and also rolling and adjusting a position to make more money with it using the covered call strategy. So the 419 covered call is what I have right now. And you will notice that I'm up $3,420. Now this is interesting because SPY is falling down and obviously my covered call position is benefiting. It's creating income, it's decaying, which is fantastic because when you're an option seller, you want the stock to basically stand still, potentially fall down a bit if you're doing the covered call strategy, but ideally it stands about still. So that's exactly what SPY is doing and that's exactly why I've been making so much money on SPY. It's very stable. As you can see, I just did this last week and I made about $630 and then again, I'm up about $3,420, which is you know, a pretty good stable return. If I'm able to do this on a weekly basis, then I'm making about $12,000 a month just on SPY. And that's a very safe, passive, consistent income for me. So I wanna show you how to roll this though, because check it out, I've already made about 13%. Now this is not as high of a percentage as I want to see, to roll this position. But for example purposes, I've already made $3,420. So if I wanna make more money, and I don't think that SPY is gonna go up a lot, I think it's gonna to continue to be stable, what I'll actually do is I will roll down. Now I've shown you guys before and I've shown my Discord how to roll up, which is protecting your gains. Okay, this is actually making more money, which is slightly different. So what I will do here is I have SPY 419 covered call. I'm gonna to go to roll this position, okay? And because SPY is pretty stable and it's falling down a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll down. So right now I have the June 16 expiration. So let's just say I still wanna use June 16. You don't always have to roll out, although you could. So I can use June 16 or I can just 
to June 30. Let's just use June 30 because it's a very slight change. It's only a few extra days, actually two weeks, about 14 days out further. But now what I will do is I will go from 419 down to, let's just say 418, okay? This is not even a big deal. This is a very small difference. But if I just move down by one, yes, I'm increasing my risk very slightly, but I'm also collecting a total credit of $5,100. So rolling can make a very significant difference in your profits. And there's a lot of benefits to rolling as well because if the stock is moving up and you can't make any more money, you can roll up and out. That's going to give you the benefit of having more capital appreciation and collecting more income. And the biggest mistake is to sometimes just hold the position and let it expire because if it's already in the money and it continues to go up, then you are leaving money on the table. So if that happens, what you wanna do next is you wanna roll up. What I wanna do in this scenario is I'm actually going to roll down because the benefit of rolling down is I get an extra $5,100. Yes, I'm increasing by 14 days, but because SPY is trending a little bit lower, I can make a little bit more money. Now, this is still safe risk management because I'm only going down by about $1. And risk management is super important. So what you would not wanna do is you would not wanna go from 419 down to 412, which would be the current stock price. Because if SPY just goes up like 1%, you're gonna miss out a lot of gains. So I would not change your strike prices too drastically. What I usually do is I adjust my strike prices very slightly to make more money, to protect my gains, or to reduce my risk. And that's, and that's really important because reducing your risk and reducing the volatility in your portfolio not only will make you feel better, but it's also gonna look a lot better in your results because when you have less volatility and more stability, then you just basically see a portfolio that's consistently going up. Like if I go to my year-to-date return, you will notice that you know, it doesn't have a lot of volatility, so it's very easy for me, and it's um, also simple for me just to rely on this income. And just to prove that I do rely on this income, if I go into my portfolio, I just wanna show you that I am consistently taking money out and withdrawing from my portfolio. So if I go to transfers right now, I'll show you that I'm consistently taking money out of my portfolio because I do use this portfolio to pay my team. My team costs me over $50,000 a month, so I am taking a lot of money out of my portfolio. And I use this for lifestyle, and I also pay my team, which helps me with my Discord. So as you can tell, I am using options for safe, passive, consistent income, and I'm always taking money out of my portfolio to fund the things that I need the money for. And I wanna point out, whether you have a small portfolio, a medium portfolio, or you know, ideally a large portfolio, ideally you have six figures, the covered call strategy, is fantastic regardless of the portfolio size because even if you have a small portfolio, you can still do the covered call strategy on Oatly. But if you have a bigger portfolio, you are going to want to run the strategy on SPY and Triple Q. And those are my two favorite plays right now because they're very diversified. You know, in these ETFs, there's a lot of stocks inside them. So it saves me a lot of time and effort from having to do a lot of research. It also saves me a lot of time and effort from picking single stocks. And I have to manage less positions because this ETF has a lot inside of it. For example, if I scroll down, you'll see that this is mainly technology and inside it has Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Nvidia, Apple, Alphabet, I already said Apple, uh, Meta, Tesla, Broadcom, Pepsi. So it has a lot of stocks inside of it and it saves me the hassle and the time of managing so many positions. If I can just make you know 2% a week on selling puts and covered calls, on triple Q, then I'm very happy because that's going to add up and that's going to snowball. And that's what I always tell people, wherever you're starting, even if you're starting with a few thousand dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, it's still about snowballing your portfolio and having compound interest. It literally doesn't matter if you have a small portfolio because it's just gonna take more time. The real equation is time. But if you manage your risk properly and if you're using this strategy in a safe way, you are going to grow your wealth. Now, just one more thing that I wanna really point out is when you are doing covered calls, you wanna make sure that the options are liquid because if they're not liquid, you are losing money to slippage. So for example, if I go to a sell call option and I pick an expiration date on Oatly, for example, at two and a half, you will see right here that it does not actually have an ideal bid ask spread. It's five and 10. Well, you probably wanna get seven, but on Robinhood, they won't allow you to do that. They're only gonna give you access in increments of five cents. So you're gonna have to put five cents and you're gonna end up losing money here, okay? So Oatly is good, don't get me wrong, but you probably wanna go out a little bit farther in terms of expiration. It gets a little bit easier, not by a lot, but you really wanna be careful and manage your position there properly. But if you look at Apple, the bid ask spread is going to be really phenomenal and that's because Apple has a lot of liquidity. So if I go to um, doing a covered call at say like 170, you'll notice right here that the bid is 28 and the ask is 29. So 
It's a very tight bid ask spread and that's really good. If it's wide, you're gonna end up losing money. If it's tight, you're gonna end up having a lot of liquidity and it's going to be very good for your overall gains and for the least amount of expenses. So let me know what stocks are you using the covered call strategy on? I do read all of your comments, so let me know which stocks you're using this on and which stocks you want me to look into. If you like this video, I will be eternally grateful. And if you subscribe, I will also be really happy to have you part of the family and I'll see you in the next video.